This is the Encounter Grow Witness podcast, and we're so glad you're joining us for our October conversation discussion with the wonderful, talented, and awesome Beth Spazarni. <laughs> Beth, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. Yeah. I'm, Every uh... month I get all these compliments in the intro, and I don't give you any. <laughs> well, I gotta work on that. Maybe next month I'll do the intro. Yeah, you can take the intro next yeah, month and I'll do try it. spend a month trying to think Come of up a compliment. With some... oh, stop it. <laughs> But uh, October might be the best yeah. month in um, the best month of the year. It might be in Michigan. Like I, I just it love the fall changing and the colors mm-hmm. of the trees, the leaves changing, and yeah. you know it, it's nice. Some people, you know, their minds already thinking towards like it's going to be cold and the trees are going to be <laughs> empty and uh, yeah. we got daylight saving time yep. coming in yep. a couple in a few weeks. So yep. anyway, but. Uh, you know, the main thing about October, mm-hmm. especially for you, I'm sure as a yeah. mom, yeah. is uh, how it ends. Yes. And it ends Halloween. with a very important day. Halloween, um, yes. So is Halloween big in your house? It is big in our house, yes. Uh, there's a lot of candy in our neighborhood. A lot yeah. of candy. We have so much candy. We did not finish last year's candy. What? Well, we take it away. We feel it's it's scary to watch them eat all this candy. So we put it up high and then give it down at different moments. But then at some point you start thinking, why am I giving them this? This is not good for them. Wow. So, yeah, we still have candy from last year. Have you seen the Jimmy Kimmel bit that no. he's done a number of years? No. Where he it's awful. It's awful. No one watch it. Uh, but it. But anyway, he uh, gets parents to tell their kids that they ate all of their Halloween candy <laughs> after they've gone to bed. And it's, you know, it's this recording of parents that's telling so kids. Funny. And then the kids are shocked or something. Yeah. So, you know, oh, it's always funny. a bunch of kids who are throwing a tantrum right. or crying oh. or sad. And then there's usually one kid who like goes up and hugs his mom and says, it's okay, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> that's so sweet. But I don't know if he does it anymore. He did it a few years. It's probably so awful, sweet. but it is so yeah. funny right? to think about like, oh my God. waking up and your mom or dad ate all, all of your of Halloween all candy. All of it. Is, it. That would be impressive. Yeah. <laughs> that you my worked husband's family, so hard they put it all into a bowl and then anyone who wants some can have it. That was not my experience growing up. This is my candy. Yeah. We sort it. We trade it. Mm-hmm. And my goal is always to be the last one having candy. Oh, to make yours last the longest. That's correct, which was no problem for me. Probably still have some of it. <laughs> what is, uh, we'll talk about costumes in a minute, but since we're talking yeah. about candy, the best, the premier candy oh, to get in That's trick or treating? That is a good question. I mean, I think the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, Buttercup, excuse me, is usually at the at the top. Yeah, we okay. just happen to have a lot of them in the house already, anyway. So, so that's not as special. I would go with the dots. Nobody Ooh. likes the dots. I okay. like the dots. They take a long time to eat, which is handy if I'm doing schoolwork or work work. I can eat one dot for twenty minutes. The dots are like the candy equivalent of the nickel <laughs> that you get. <laughs> Right? <laughs> Do you ever you get nickels? Be right. But because no one or, likes or the a dots, toothbrush or I take pretzels them, no one cares. Or, so yeah. I'll go with the dots. Growing up in a big family, like yeah. finding something you like that no one else is likes, huge. that's a Very huge important. thing. So yeah. for me, that was a big thing yeah. to like, this is the thing I like and yeah. no one else. So yeah. it was Three Musketeers for me. Three Musketeers. I really liked Three oh, Musketeers. Man. And I think what oh, I liked man. about it was Nobody I didn't have to worry them. about anyone stealing it. Yeah, because so. they're not that good. Uh, I've grown. I've grown. <laughs> I've grown to like them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Uh, costumes. Tears. Yeah, costumes. Okay. Did so you Did you dress up growing up? I did. I did. And my favorite embarrassing story. I used to when I would do youth ministry. If I went into the schools to make an announcement, the rule was I had to tell an embarrassing story before I could make my announcement. They okay. love this rule, <laughs> and I liked it because they would listen to my announcement. Okay. So that's fine. But yeah, in fourth grade, I went as garbage. Ooh. Garbage. This is this is a terrible <laughs> idea. I can't believe my parents let me go as garbage. I wore it to school and everything. What what did you a just like a bag? bag? A garbage bag with paper in it. The wow. only thing that made it slightly less embarrassing, which is hard to imagine, is that my best friend also went as garbage <laughs> and she wore sweatpants and taped garbage to herself. <laughs> Do you know how many parents failed for this to happen? I mean, I must have been very passionate to talk my mother into this. Thing. Wow. I don't know. How about you? That, that's Did a you heck also of a go friend. as garbage? <laughs> I don't think that's a heck of a friend to uh, yeah, yeah. be in garbage yeah. solidarity with it, you. She was more than in solidarity. She had the real garbage with her. Yeah, so. she went up to. She did. Yeah. She did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, you know, I don't remember any costumes I had as a kid. Are you serious? I do. Yeah, I'm kind of lame one. with that kind of stuff. We had those Superhero. cheap little co- uh, costumes yeah. with the little string and the mask. Oh, and the yeah, string the would rubber break. nose or something. No, it was a full mask, but it just had uh-huh. like the cheapest string that went around your head. Yeah. And it always broke. And so like the <laughs> third house in, I don't have my mask. <laughs> I like, remember it always being cold and rainy. It's always cold and rainy. That's <laughs> so, Halloween. So, and That's we, Halloween. And we didn't yeah. have like costumes over the coat. So we had our coat yeah. over our costume. It's true. It was, you know, I just remember like... This is just about getting candy. You have to earn the candy. <laughs> That's the deal. It's cold. It's rainy. You got to get out there. Be brave. Show your perseverance. Yeah. That's, yeah. And I will say we went through high school. I was with a group in high school and we yeah. would go. I think we went trick or treating most of the time. But there was a girl in our class who had kind of a Halloween party and uh-huh. we all went over her house. Nice. and like Just kind of hung out. And so I remember high school and Hall- or Halloween in high school being being a lot of fun okay. um but i think now i don't know do high schoolers still do i think they halloween? do still do halloween parties although okay. i i'm slightly more out of touch now that i'm not in youth ministry but i think so but for me halloween was all about being a little kid and yeah. our rule was we would make our route weeks beforehand oh this you would plan route. it out oh we were very intense and if you're going to go in our group you're going to run wow. from house to house no whining wow no whatever and none of those little pails Come on, a little pumpkin pail. Do you have a pillowcase? Did you come to win or did you come to do two houses and go home? So, yeah, pillowcases. Absolutely. Pillowcases. Yep. Wow. So I've taught my children the correct way, although now I'm not letting them have the candy because it's too scary. Wow. Look at this wow. mountain of candy. I don't want them to eat that. Wow. You know, uh, Ron, sick. Ron, our excellent producer, I yeah. heard, was a ghost every year. Every for Halloween, year? even oh even gosh, till this, this year, great. every year he dresses up as that a ghost. That explains his costume now. I yep. didn't want to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> dresses up as a ghost every Halloween every of his Halloween. life. So anyway, fun Halloween fact about costumes. Ron Pangborn there for you. <laughs> I've been trying to sell my kids this year on the banana costume. Oh. It's not working. They're like, that would be so embarrassing, mom. So I was, tr- I've talked about it so much. I thought, well, maybe I need to get the banana costume. But I looked oh. at it. I, I, I'm not funny enough to do a banana costume. <laughs> I, I got a wig, but like, uh, I don't think I can do it. It's too ridiculous. Yeah. You could pull then, off the banana costume, Father thank, Bullis. Thank Who you. thinks Father Steve should thank be the banana? <laughs> uh, yeah. Then if you were, you could be the top banana. I could be the top banana. But I'm yeah. ching. I'm still right. thinking about it. All right. Well, let's not just talk about Halloween. Yeah. And wonderful fall else. stuff. Let's yeah. talk about things that are far more important than yeah. uh, than that. And uh, yeah. let's talk about prayer. Let's talk about prayer. When we talk about prayer, let's uh, just kind of go into what it actually looks mm-hmm. like to pray and yeah. what your prayer and my prayer looks like. Yeah. Um, Beth, do you want to yeah, yeah, talk yeah. about I just think it's like so you? important to talk about. I, I used to, when I was in youth ministry, I used to tell people that the most important decision I ever made in my life was to surrender my life to Jesus Christ. And the second most important decision I ever made in my entire life was the commitment and the choice to pray every day. Because I think that's really where you start to see change and that's really where things come alive. So, yeah. So for me, I think um, I've got a big, strong morning prayer habit um, and I also have a great love of journaling and scripture. Mm. So every day I, um, there's prayers that I say every morning. Um, I love the Nicene Creed. Um, Do you pray the Nicene Creed every morning? I actually pray the Apostles' Creed every morning because St. Cyril of Jerusalem in the early RCA was really serious about it. Yeah. And he made them promise to say the Apostles' Creed every single day. Wow. And so I, when I read that in my grad school, I was okay. All right, St. Cyril, you got it. <laughs> so every morning, I'm on, I'm on Creed, Team Cyril of Jerusalem. Yeah, there you go. It's the first thing. Um, so the, the Apostles' Creed, the pardon prayer from Fatima. Just oh, love yeah. this prayer of praying for people who don't know and love and adore him and praying that they would and praying, yeah. yeah. Um, and then the morning offering, but mostly I think the daily mass readings, praying with those. Um, yeah, I just really love reading scripture and praying with that and just sitting with it. Um, but it can be hard to find the time as a mom yeah. when I had newborns and when I was pregnant, I found it. I was so anxious about not getting that sacred time that no one could disturb me. And when you've got a newborn, there is no sacred time. There is none. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I've had to like learn to adjust in a different way as well to different seasons of life. So, but yeah, for me, my favorite thing is morning, big, strong morning prayer habit. I think beginnings matter. 
Um, so, so, so yeah. we're gonna we're gonna pry into this a little bit. Go Beth, ahead and pry. Like, is that first thing in the morning before kind of getting up, brushing your teeth? I, that, I feel whatever? like I, should, I brush my teeth before. <laughs> okay, it's just part of and yeah. floss and all that before. You know, in the morning flossing, I don't know. <laughs> I think once a day would be enough. Okay. Uh, yeah, get okay. up, brush teeth, go pray. Okay. My favorite is if everyone is asleep. Mm. Usually that happens, but with little kids, you can't guarantee. And you can't be grouchy with them, although sometimes I am. I'm sorry. But kind of getting up before... Before everybody. Yeah. Well, it's yep. still very quiet. Yep. Okay. Darkness of the morning and the quiet. Yeah. 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 It's great. How about you? Yeah. Um, living here at Sacred Heart Seminary, uh, we have, we're we really blessed that uh, we often have adoration in the morning nice. uh, before Mass. So. Generally for me, I get up at 530 mm-hmm. and um, kind of do my morning routine of, you know, shower and shave and brush floss? my teeth. I I have flossed. Uh-huh. Uh- <laughs> and to note the wording there, <laughs> listeners, note the wording. I have flossed. Uh, yeah. Um, and then, you know, being in the chapel to pray. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I, I usually pray my morning offering, which I think is just yeah. a beautiful prayer of kind of consecrating the day to the yeah, Lord. It's the whole day of prayer. Yeah. Every action. All what a great thoughts, prayer. words, actions, um, consecrating that. There's a number of saints I ask their intercession. So yeah. I have a little team of 16. 16? <laughs> uh, yeah. And you go through kind of it a big every squad. day? I just, you know, I just I like say, it. pray all this through the intercession. And then I kind of. You lit, name them all. I name them all. I yep. like it. Yeah. All so right. so that's part of my prayer. And then prayers for the Holy Father, the our Father, Hail Mary, and Glory yeah. Be. Um, nice. So I pray that. Um you know, as priests, we make a promise to pray the Liturgy of the Hours, mm-hmm. which are uh, the kind of psalms and the collective prayer of the church mm-hmm. that priests and religious pray. Um, I found that to be really beautiful. Yeah. Uh, it's something to enter into. Now, sometimes it's challenging. We'll talk about challenges in prayer yeah. in a minute. But, um, you know, when I think about what prayer is, I think about it as lifting my mind and heart to the Lord mm. um, as half of it. That mm-hmm. it's lifting myself to the Lord and saying like, okay, Jesus, I am focused on you mm-hmm. or Holy Spirit, I'm focused on you yeah. and I want to give you my attention as best I can, right? Yeah. Like put away other things I'm thinking about or yeah. other things that creep up and just say, okay, Lord, I want to turn to you. And for me, often that's bringing things to him. Mm. Um, some of my work as a seminary formator, bringing that to him, mm-hmm. the men or the things I have to do and saying, okay. Okay, Lord, I like I, I want this to be for you, and mm-hmm. I want you to be the the guiding principle for it. Um, you know, I want you to show mm-hmm. me how to do it. Uh, sometimes it's bringing uh, concerns mm-hmm. to him, and other times it's just kind of like bringing either successes I've had yeah. or joys in my life, and saying like, Lord, I I just I want to see this in your eyes, so I want to mm-hmm. bring it to you. Right, yeah. this um, either sometimes I've. I feel like I preached well and I was like, this is what I should have said or, or I did some, a situation really well. I'm like, okay, Lord, I want to bring it to you. Not in a like, Hey, look at me, (laughs) but in a way that says like, God, this was for you. And Mm. I want, I want it to be for you. And so I I bring it to you. But then, you know, to me the the most important part of prayer isn't what I'm doing. It's what God does yeah. in response to that. So, True. so much of prayer for me is trying to be quiet too. Yeah. Like, Lord, I bring this to you. Now I want to hear what you say to me. Yeah. And he can speak, you know, God can speak to us in the silence of our prayer and speak mm-hmm. right to my heart. Often he speaks to me through scripture, as you're yeah. talking about. And I'm sure that's what yeah. you're talking about too, Absolutely. right? Like, mm-hmm. okay, God wants to say to me a word of encouragement yeah. about, you know, don't be discouraged about difficulties or challenges. Or he wants to say to me, a word of challenge, like, you know, yeah. I've called you to be great and don't yeah. be mediocre. Don't accept mediocrity. Um, or I need you to be my instrument in this situation. Yeah. I know you're uncomfortable or I know you don't know how to do it. Yeah. Just go and do it. Um, mm. So, you know, prayer is that dialogue for me that yeah. kind of bringing myself to the Lord and then letting him um, letting him take take me where he wants to take. Yeah, me. Yeah, this is beautiful. I really relate to St. Therese and just this littleness that bringing the Lord our weaknesses and bringing the Lord the sorrows and the worries and just like a child bringing all these little things to the Father. So, yeah, I love that. I think one of the other beautiful things in in prayer um, is just the prayer of worship. 
Mm. Um, whether it's song or just prayers, remi- reminding and recalling who God is and announcing it out loud. Yeah. I find those bring so much freedom. Lord, you are the Lamb of God. You are our refuge. You are the King of Kings. Like whenever I pray that way, and I always challenge people to bring in their prayer that way, and I've got to like, I've got to like get back to it. But yeah. I just find that it it changes the whole tenor of your prayer because you're yeah. remembering who you're speaking to, Yeah, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, that's right. It's not, it's not like maybe you can help me with these things. <laughs> <laughs> you can definitely help yeah. move and do. And No, yeah. that that's beautiful. You know, there's so many prayers in the church that are like that. The liturgy is often, the yeah. mass is often like, and it's kind of funny to think about, right? We're telling God who he is. Yeah. <laughs> like, For our sake, actually. Right, right. It's not it's like crazy. he forgot. He's well aware. <laughs> we don't know, though. But it calibrates yeah. the relationship that yeah. we're meant to have with him of utter dependency, complete yeah. trust, you know, confidence that our problems are not either too big for him yeah. or irrelevant to him yeah. um, so that he can handle them and he cares and he wants to. Yeah. And so uh, kind of speaking that out loud, I, you're right. That is, yeah. that is a beautiful way to pray. Just telling yeah. God who he is and the prayers of the liturgy can be that way um, that I find really, you know, especially the Eucharistic prayer where we're just kind of speaking the account of redemption yeah. um, that is so, so necessary for us to remind ourselves who God is. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's beautiful. Are there other prayers? So like for me, praying the rosary every day, and I I admit some days I I don't do it because I get, you know, there are other things I wind up spending time in prayer on. Um, But I've really kind of made a commitment to say, that's what I want to be doing. Yeah. Um, So praying the liturgy of the hours and the rosary Mm -hmm. for me, and then as a priest, I offer mass every day, which is a prayer. Um, but but are there other prayers that for you, like, this yeah. is what I pray every day? Yeah, I really love the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Um, mm. The last couple of Lents, I've prayed it every day during Lent, and yeah. I've wanted to extend it beyond that. But then also as a mom, sometimes I can get a little too, I yeah, well, we're not, we're not to the challenges yet, <laughs> so we're just going to stay with it. But I really, really love the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Yeah. I really love it. I especially love the, the opening prayer, you expire, Jesus, but the source of life gush forth for souls. Whenever I encounter a moment of despair or like darkness or or either, either in my family or in the world or at work where I'm like, oh, what a mess. I just go back to that. You expire, Jesus. But the, so it just brings me so much hope. Um, so I really love the Divine Mercy Chaplet. And I also really do love the rosary. I feel like I'm I'm building up as we're I'm finishing the New Testament in a year. Yeah. As I'm finishing that, um, I feel like I'm moving towards a rosary every day for the next year. But I, I don't know yet. But I just feel like the Lord's quietly saying, like, we're going to do this. Yeah. Like, okay. Um, so I really love those two. I think for me in prayer generally, as a child, I learned the traditional prayers. And I think as I, I like I thought, OK, so you just say them. Right. And then as I grew up, a little became a teenager. I think I started to fe- find those prayers really empty mm-hmm. um, or shallow or like, we're, yeah, like we don't like like when you when you see married people say I love you and they're really just saying get milk at the store. You know, like that's kind of the tone <laughs> right. of the expression, you know. So I, I yeah. So but then when I was a teen, I fell in love with spontaneous prayer, ch- charismatic prayer, like just which is like casual, passionate, from the heart, you know, exploding out of your heart prayer. And now that I've grown up as a woman, I've really come to appreciate the depth of traditional prayer, Mm -hmm. the depth of these prayers that the saints have written that have been revealed. Um, And I I, I find myself going back to them more, the litany of humility, the litany of trust. These are just such gifts um, that both inform and guide me in prayer. So I, I do love some traditional prayer. That's great. Yeah. Are there any prayers you don't like, Beth? <laughs> prayers I don't like. Or prayers you um, don't have a devotion to, prayers or I don't prayers have a that like to. other people are like, I really love this. You're like, yeah. Some some of the language of the these and thous and some some of the more like medieval sounding intense mm. ones, I have a harder time with. Yeah. Um, and then any prayer that really sounds like we're looking to the saint as though they are God. Gotcha. I don't like those. Yeah. Um. And, and also any prayer that really sounds like, I, okay, here's a prayer I really don't there like. There we go. I don't like prayers that are not prayers. That just talk to us. That are actually us. just a reflection. <laughs> I don't know how many times we start meetings or, or people are like, oh, I found this beautiful prayer. And then they read this reflection that's like, <laughs> we are made in God's image. And I'm like, this is not a prayer. This is a lovely reflection, but this is not a prayer. A prayer is something that's addressed to God, yeah. <laughs> right? Right. Or to the saints to carry to God. So I suppose that's one thing okay. I don't like. Yeah. What about you? 
prayers you don't like. <laughs> Yeah. So the litany of trust was one that I oh, just I love it. Now oh, I've prayed it a couple that. of times and I see yeah. everyone handing it out. I'm like, eh, <laughs> not for me. Thanks. Too, too, too squishy, too, too feminine. I don't know. Like... So maybe I, it okay. might be that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I like the litany of humility. Yeah. I, like, I, I love yeah. me a good litany. But uh, the litany of trust. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You just don't feel like you have to no, trust. I prayed it a few times. Yeah, exactly. That, this is the danger of it, right? Like, I'm oh. Just teasing you. You don't have to love everything. But, uh, but yeah, I think so, because it can be good to hear kind of this conversation just to yeah. say, like, not every prayer has to be for everyone or every yeah. devotion needs to be for everyone. Yeah. It's okay to That's say, true. like, okay, this is not my kind of prayer, right. but other people love it and right. it works for them. Right. Yeah. So prayer is always awesome. It's it always easy, always, you know, without problems uh, yeah. for you. But for me, <laughs> sometimes there's challenges in prayer. Yeah, and some of the are. challenges that I've experienced and, and, you know, most people have is a kind of dryness mm -hmm. that when we pray, you know, it requires effort on our part. So so the first thing can be like, I don't know if I want to do this, right? I'm kind of yeah. tired or I'm yeah. kind of have other things yeah. that, you know, I feel like I need to be doing. Yeah. But um, so one of the challenges can be not wanting to do it. And yeah. then when we pray, we can feel like the Lord isn't there. It can be hard to perceive him. Yeah. Um, yeah. St. Ignatius of Loyola talks about this, you know, in, in a category of desolation yeah. where it doesn't feel like we're close to God mm -hmm. and where it can be challenged. And even at times when we're repelled from holy things, mm. when we're kind of turned away from it. Um, so desolation and dryness can yeah. be a real challenge in prayer. And, you know, the way I think about it is like God attracts us to himself mm -hmm. with, um, with the sweetness yeah, and you know, a lot of saints talk about this with yeah. the sweetness and the consolation mm -hmm. and the perceptive closeness, mm -hmm. but he wants more than it to be a transactional relationship. He wants us to grow up. Yeah. yeah. So the maturity comes when we say, I'm going to pray not because of the sweetness and the consolation right. I feel, but because it's right and yeah. I need it and God deserves it. Yeah. And whether I feel dry or desolate, or whether I feel consolation and sweetness, mm -hmm. I'm going to be a man or a woman who's consistently praying. Yep. And that can be a real challenge because when we don't feel like anything is happening, yeah. um, the easiest thing to do is just to turn away and say, well, I'm going to do something else. Yeah. And for people in ministry, it's not hard to busy themselves with something else. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, yeah. it's very easy. Yeah. I think I was on a retreat um, last year and I was just, it was one of those times where I was sitting in the chapel and I hadn't brought a plan or a book, which is, I should have. Um, I think <laughs> it was St. Teresa of Avila who said she never would enter prayer. She would not dare to enter prayer without a book. Mm. Anyway, <clears throat> so I was sitting there and all of a sudden I'd start remembering all these sad, horrible things that have happened, you know, just yeah. in my life, just old wounds. And, you know, I, was, I started writing down, I'm like, man, this is like a lot of hard mess. Like, Lord, are you going to heal something here? What's happening? And I was like, can, do you, like, what are you going to say into this, Lord? And there was, there was just silence. And finally, I, the one thing I thought I almost heard was, why do I need to say more? Mm. And in the time I was so crushed and like, Lord, why wouldn't you speak into these wounds and like bring healing and give some of that consolation, you yeah. know, but I really see now and I'm continuing to see that like the Lord was inviting, he's, in, he's inviting me to remember, to remember what, what he's already said, what he's already done, you know, um, and not to always be looking for one more thing. <clears throat> Lord, what will you tell me today? Right. <laughs> right the right. Lord has given us me so much already. And I need to go back and remember it, remember yeah. who he is. And there shouldn't be anything that comes to mind or that happens in the world that I would allow to let me forget all that he said and all that he's done. Mm -hmm. um, but I think on the, other, on the other hand of that, right, where I don't want to expect every time some new consolation, I think there is a challenge to come to prayer with an expectancy. Yeah. I mean, I started my daily morning prayer habit in high school, and um, it's been a lot of years since then. And some mornings I get up and I journal and I read the scriptures and I pray and I, I don't sense anything. I don't hear anything, you know, but then 
I was watching The Chosen over the summer, and there's one um, episode where um, I think it's Philip or something. The, everybody's gone to sleep. All the disciples have gone to sleep, and Jesus is there at the camp. He just gets back, and there's a fire, and Philip is there, and um, you think, oh, they're just going to go to bed, and Jesus invites Philip. He's like, do you want to talk? And they go, and they sit down at the fire, and just the intimacy of sitting at the fire with Christ himself mm. alone together it just like in like it flooded over me and I was thinking, Lord, yeah. like what I would give to just sit down with you at a fire, you know, what questions I would bring, what hopes and dreams and, you know, and then I, I just felt the Lord say like, we have that every day. Yeah. We have that every morning. You can mm -hmm. come to prayer with the expectancy that I'm here, yeah. that I listen, that I love, you know. Um, but I think it can be challenging to have that same expectancy, even though there are seasons of dryness, right? Yeah. We don't always get the consolation, and and I want to grow up <laughs> where I don't always need need something big. So no, it, it's yeah. the expectancy I think of when after Lazarus dies, and I forget. I think it's is it Martha or Mary who? Yeah, it's who, actually Martha who, who gives says them. to him, um, "You know, Lord, if you had been here, yeah. my brother would not have died." But even no, yeah. So it, it it's so beautiful. Yeah. I think about that in prayer, like. She's expecting things from the Lord. Yeah. She's disappointed She's when he disappointed. doesn't do what he wants her to do. Yeah. But that is all part of God's plan of yeah. her maturity and her understanding more deeply who he is. And I, I think about mm. that. So you're so right, Beth, to yeah. say we go to prayer with expectation and we need to. Yeah. Even when it's not like, you know, Jesus doesn't come running through the right. doors like the Kool-Aid right, man, right? right? right. <laughs> kind of like this dramatic entrance. Right. Um, the part of the expectation is to say, like, God, I want to experience you in all the fullness yeah. that you're going to reveal yourself today. Yeah. And I'm ready for all of that. Absolutely. Um, and I'm ready for whatever you're going to do here, um, even if it's to disappoint me in some way, because mm -hmm. I know you never truly disappoint. So to be disappointed by the Lord is for us to kind of like recalibrate who God is yeah. and it fixes you know, the, the false idol of God that we craft for ourselves. Yeah. So kind of going with that expectation to say, God, like I'm ready for whatever you want me to mm -hmm. do. Um, that can be so purifying yeah. for who we are. And especially those of us in ministry, like God wants an intimate, deep personal yes. relationship with, yes. right? Uh, but he also like demands that we be mature disciples. Yeah. And so part of what we're doing is assuming the mantle of responsibility for the church. Yeah. And to do that, we, we have to be men and women who pray in season we and out do. of season. Yeah. We yeah. can't just try to do these things on our own strength. right? Yeah, or it can't be like when I have time, I pray yeah. or when things are going well yeah. or when I'm in a pinch. That's when I go pray, yeah. right? When I don't know what to do. Yeah, let's be honest. The biggest challenge we have in prayer is not praying. Yeah. <laughs> That's the biggest challenge. Yeah. The worst prayer times we have are the ones we skip. So, yeah. And yeah. that tells us the most important thing. The fun runs. Yeah. I, I might be getting a little too loud here, but I'm going to get loud, Ron. The most important fundamental yeah. thing here in prayer is showing up. Showing up. Right? That's, That's like right. number one is to show up and pray. Yeah. And, or to, to show up to prayer. And number yeah. two, in my in my estimation, so your thoughts, is doing our best to put away distractions yeah. so that we can give ourselves to the Lord. Yeah. I heard I heard this wonderful priest kind of give a talk about distractions in his prayer. And sometimes distractions are what God is inviting us to pray about. Mm. And he was on a retreat and um, had been really, really busy and was so glad to kind of be in retreat. And he was at a place where these cows were mooing outside the uh, retreat center. Right? Mm -hmm. It was in the middle of nowhere in South yeah. Dakota. Um, and he was getting frustrated. Like he, like he was trying to pray and like right. he'd hear these cows moo right. and it was distracting him. And so like after a few times, he was telling me this story. He goes, you know, it's just like, God, like I'm so annoyed by these cows. What's mm. up with these these cows I can hear mooing, yep. whatever they were, a quarter mile away, whatever. Yep. And he said it just like was revealed to him in prayer, you know, kind of like his eyes were open to this. Like you were so busy and I brought you to a place mm -hmm. where you're hearing cows moo mm -hmm. as the noise you're hearing. Like mm -hmm. this is my gift to you that mm -hmm. you are in a place where this is. You're away. Yeah. yeah like, like you can't be more away. Yeah, right? right. The only noise are these these cows. Yeah. Um and he said it just kind of flipped him yeah. to say, OK, well, what I thought was a distraction, maybe God was inviting me to consider um, yep. to pray. Yep. So putting away distractions when I think about that is saying, like, 
I'm not going to focus on what I want to focus on or Mm -hmm. just have this conversation with myself, but I'm going to relate everything in my life to the Mm -hmm. Lord. And I think there's, there's even an expectancy in that, right? Expecting and knowing that everything that comes in prayer is a gift. Yeah. Um, And so even that the cows were, there was a gift there, you know, before I went to India, my favorite place to pray was in the church and there was a brick road outside the church, my parish, and you would hear just the cars driving up the brick road. And it was just this very like, just peaceful, very like quiet noises, very quiet. And I went to India and the best church I could find had, I mean, cars honking, people yelling, kids from the school screaming. And I just remember sitting there and being like, Lord, I can't hear you. It's too loud, which yeah. is true. India is too loud. It's yeah. great. It's great about India. It's too loud. But um, but I think now the Lord was inviting me. He was giving me the gift of learning to hear him in the noise. Mm. And that's an amazing gift. That's an yeah. incredible gift, right? To learn how to hear yeah. him in the noise. But I think when I was early in my ministry life, um, I started out working for the church part-time. So I I know there's a lot of part-timers in the church. I started as part-time and I had another full-time job and I was just exhausted. I was always working. I was always going and I was just exhausted. And then when I did come to work for the church full-time, I still was doing the same thing. I was just exhausted. It's easy. It's hard. Like the job never finishes, you know, it just never finishes. So I kept going and going and going and, and my prayer life suffered. Or I think I thought it was like indulgent to sit and pray when there's Mm. so many people that need to hear. There's so much to do. There's like, yeah. And I, I, a friend told me, you need to read the soul of the apostolate. And, and you brought it with you. Today. I did. I brought it with me. And yeah. it, most of it is underlined. But I, <laughs> the amount of people who told me to read this book, it got to be so many that I was like, fine, I will get the book. And I did. And it, essentially, I would say the main takeaway of it, um, it's written for priests. Um, but the main point of it is that for those of us who are working in ministry, there's an incredible temptation and danger um, from the enemy that would get us to be working so hard Um, And so much that we greatly neglect prayer and the interior life, which is the soul of the apostolate, which is the fuel that 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 drives everything. And not only so not only do our ministries suffer when we neglect prayer, um, but we're risking our own salvation by doing it. Yeah. And um, so essentially, he's basically saying, like, it's it's incredibly dangerous for you. It's incredibly spiritually dangerous for you, for us in ministry in particular to follow that temptation to be Martha all day long, because actually there are much easier ways to go to hell, (laughs) much easier (laughs) ways to go to hell. Uh, And so I I started going, I I was at a diocesan thing not too much longer after I had read it. And I was just going on about it like, oh my gosh, we have got to be praying. We have got to be, I was like, is anyone else neglecting that? And everyone's like, oh yeah, well, there's just not time. And I thought, Again, there are, and when I said, I said that exact thing, I said, there are a lot of easier ways to go to hell than to do this. And p- you could hear people at the table gasp. And I, I was probably a little too intense. You know, it's fair. Well, that's probably good. That's too. good to get There's a little There's a little John the Baptist happening that day. But I think it's really dangerous. And the, the longer I'm in ministry, the more convinced I am of this fact. I've heard yeah. maintenance workers say that, you know, they're so busy repairing the kneelers and doing this and doing that, that like they can't sit down and pray like there wouldn't be time or it would be neglectful of them to do. Yeah. But h- how will we do God's work if if we're not sitting with him? Yeah. We don't look like him or sound like him if we're not spending time with him. Yeah. Amen. I mean, when I was working at the Chancery, that was one thing I asked my team. I said, we need to commit individually mm-hmm. to praying in at least an hour a week. Nice as like part of our job, part of our work week. Yeah. And uh, in the chancery, we had a, a chapel, like every yeah. church has a uh, a church. A church. <laughs> <laughs> every parish yeah. has a church. Um, but, you know, because that is so important yeah. to say prayer has to be part of it. And I, I just know for me as a priest, like there's a million reasons not to pray. Yeah. Um, that email, there's a million reasons family, to say that whatever. it's too busy. This is too yeah. important. You know, um, my work is my prayer. Yeah. Um, it's not. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it better be. It's a lie. But, b- but it's a lie to say yeah. I'm too busy to pray because yeah. that's the idol that yeah. we need to smash is that yeah. like I am so important. There's so much pride wrapped up in it. Right. Yeah. My work is too important for me to sit. <laughs> yeah. It's too important. The Lord needs me. Does he? <laughs> really? <laughs> and, I, you he? know, I think of it like uh, I'm not a NASCAR fan, but I know what NASCAR is. Uh, I think of it like NASCAR <laughs> where, you know, the cars are in this race and they're saying, 
I'm too busy to stop and get gas. Yeah. I just need to keep going. That's right. And you're like, uh, okay. Yeah, like right. you know th- that this might, might work, work once yeah. that might work once like on a certain yeah. day where you're like right. there's just it, there there's right. so many things where it's like you know um today it didn't work but yeah. if that becomes our pattern that's Oof. yeah i mean that's a path to destruction it's a path to destruction yeah yeah it and really so is. you know whoever is um has made it this far in the podcast in the uh you know, working in ministry, like I just, I beg you, Beth yeah. and I have, have talked a few times about an article I wrote uh, a few months yeah. ago, I think the at the pitfalls, beginning of the, the school five year, pitfalls of working for the church, or the beginning of the calendar yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just how important it is. And like, yeah. if we're not praying, like we need to figure out yeah. what we need to change to pray Yeah, and not like long-term strategy in a year from now, Yeah, like today, pretty now. quickly today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and not only because of, I mean, we've talked about like how it, I think there's an interesting thing, too, where like we think, oh, we need to pray so that we'll be successful in ministry. And uh, it's true that if we don't pray, we won't be fruitful in ministry, certainly. But like we should feel the call to pray because God has more to give us. Like we need to receive and we need to give him the worship that that we need to give. It's not like worship. The the catechism says that the worship of the one God sets man free. Mm. I would like to be free. Yeah. And if we ourselves who are in ministry aren't taking the time to worship him, to become more free, then, you know, how are we going to convince others to do that? Yeah. We probably what, what won't are we doing? be effective. Yeah, it's I all mean, it all just becomes a big mirage. Yeah, it's the definition of building a house on sand. Yeah. So. And it's very common. Like one of the so I I was telling you that before we started recording that I the article you wrote I've I actually was able to lead a staff retreat for a parish over the summer and I brought the article mm-hmm. and I had us all read it out loud and then we just talked about it in small groups you know I was hoping to send them away to pray to reflect more <laughs> but we just did some talking about it and one of the things that resonated was they said huh so he's saying these are common pitfalls <laughs> so 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 like not praying may not just be my personal <laughs> problem it may be collectively our problem. Yeah. Like, yes. Um, yeah. But these are, and then I, I've also done this with school teachers, our Catholic school teachers. They're not praying. The people who work in our churches, they're not praying. The people who are answering the phones at our churches, they're not praying. The maintenance workers, they're not praying. Like, this is, this is not good, yeah. right? We, we look like people who are, um, who are emaciated from not eating. Yeah. And we wonder why more people aren't feeling compelled to join us. <laughs> At the right? wedding banquet. At the wedding said. banquet. Yeah. 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 And just God wants so much more for us. Yes. And not just from us. He's not right. this isn't like God's, you know, saying more uh more bricks and no more straw. Or you right. know, this isn't God is Pharaoh. This is God saying he wants so much more yeah. for us and for you. He yeah. wants a deep, intimate relationship with you. Yeah. And he wants that not just as a means to an end for your ministry. Right. He wants that as an end in itself in a relationship with you, yeah. uh, storing up the good things he's promised for you for eternal life. So yeah. uh, I just I beg you, if you're not a man or a woman of prayer, to, to make that part of your life today, yeah. uh, to find a way to give the Lord some time. And and again, it's just, it's lifting your heart to the Lord. It's mm-hmm. as best you can putting away distractions. So not having your phone on, you yeah. know, on or buzzing with you yeah. and just taking that time to say, Jesus, I'm giving you my heart, my life, mm-hmm. whatever's troubling me, giving me joy right now. Mm-hmm. And then listening to what you want to say back to me, being open to hearing your word, mm-hmm. um, kind of starting in, in that way, and as Beth talked about, you know, the way that vocal prayer or prayers that we've known as kids or we, mm-hmm. we recite in the church to kind of to speak that with all the meaning we have in our hearts. Mm-hmm. So when we say, you know, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, it's not just I'm I'm reciting a prayer that I learned as a kid. Mm-hmm. It's I do this and mm-hmm. I believe like I profess this, Lord, I believe this is who you are. So whatever prayer we say, mm-hmm. that we say it with all the meaning that we are kind of uniting ourselves to this truth that God frees us mm-hmm. when we worship him and he yeah. wants us to be free sons and daughters uh, in his love. Absolutely. One last thought. We had a family holy hour this week 
I bring all the little bitty ones into the church. Yeah. We have the adoration. It's not really an hour. That would be insane. <laughs> but uh, we and we invite the children to come close. And then um, Father Mark carried around the monstrance and blessed each individual yeah. child, grown up, whatever. And um, there was one little girl. She had these little curls, and she's sitting on the floor. And the Lord, she must have been. I don't know. I don't know if she could have been too. And when the Lord came over, I thought her prayer might have been the best prayer I've ever seen. So the Lord came over in the monstrance, the Eucharist, and her mom whispered something, and she waved. <laughs> and then she sat there, and she picked up her foot. And then her shoe came off in her hand, and she held up her shoe. <laughs> and then her mom whispered something else, and she blew a kiss, and then the monstrance moved on. But I thought there was something very profound, and like we say hello, <laughs> we offer the Lord what we have, which in her case was her shoe. <laughs> And then we say we love you. Yeah. Right. This is a this is a beautiful prayer. Very good. Very good two year old prayer. Very good. Yeah. So learning from two year olds yeah, how to pray. We just give the Lord what we have, and we yeah. say we love Him. Yeah. It's a pretty good start. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Amen. Amen. This has been the Encounter Grow Witness podcast with Father Steve Pullis and Beth Spazarni. This is a podcast by and for those who work in ministry, supporting each other to grow in our relationship with Christ and the church to enable us to be better witnesses of his love in the world. Let's be better fishers of men together. Please subscribe, listen on Apple, Spotify, Google, or wherever you get your podcasts.